kids. This is the Angle Angle. I am Fort Worth Star Telegram sports columnist Mac Engel. Uh, and a few podcasts ago, I whined about what I should do with a whole bunch of the sports collectibles that I had since my childhood and that currently litter my closet with absolutely no use to me at all anymore. So since that time I complained about it, this little venture of mine has taken a hard right turn into you've got to be kidding me because I have taken the time to put up some of these items uh, on eBay. I sold a few, it's nothing big, not like $100,000 or anything, although I'm hopeful. Uh, it's more like finding about $30 between your couch cushions, between the remote control and that apple that you forgot to throw away. So I recently sold a set of football cards, football cards from the 1990 Super Bowl between the New York football giants and the Buffalo football bills. I was very excited. I sold them, put them in an envelope, drove up to the uh, post office, had the guy weigh it because I wasn't sure if it exceeded the single stamp minimum. And then I mailed them to the lucky winner in Buffalo, New York. Now, I have no idea why someone in Buffalo, New York wants a set of trading cards from a game that is the single lowest moment in Buffalo sports history. That says a lot, too. I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's a masochist and he enjoys self-cutting. Not here to judge. I like to think of myself as an evaluator. I don't judge, I evaluate. So if reliving the worst moment in the history of Buffalo is your thing, like that's your foot fetish, have at it. I mean, you already choose to live, to live in Buffalo. It's a city that's freezing 13 months out of the year. So I'm not sure how adding a collectible card set from the worst moment in Buffalo sports history is really going to change things for you. But go ahead. He paid for it. And I was very excited just to get him out of the house. About 10 days later, I get an email email, very angry from the buyer who says, quote, I just received my order from you in which you indicate me, you indicate postage is $4.75. When the order arrived at my home, the postal carrier requested an additional, additional all caps, $3.91 for postage. The envelope you mailed my item indicates U.S. postage of 84 cents, end quote. Apparently, for reasons I don't know, they didn't call me, the postal carrier charged this guy extra for delivery. No idea why, none. Maybe it's because he lives in Buffalo and everything requires an additional five bucks. I don't know. Anyways, I thought about this and I thought, you know, I went to the post office post office or post office. It's a new thing. And the guy weighed it. He weighed the envelope and he charged me 84 cents. And I thought, okay, great. It's done. I'm done. I'm out. I don't have to look at these stupid cards anymore. It's out of the house. Made some money. The buyer continues to write me, quote, the agreement was not, all caps, not, not for me to pay an additional fee upon delivery. Please refund me immediately, as I will be contacting eBay regarding this deceptive action. End quote. Deceptive action. It's very expensive words. I respond kindly, sincerely. I tell them there was nothing deceiving about what I intended to do or did do that I set the bidding price at the number eBay suggested, and I set the shipping and handling at $4.75 because I figured the price of a stamp, price of an envelope, driving to the post office, my time, it covers all of these absurdly low costs. And and I think I think the real reason I set it at $4.75 was I thought, okay, I'll set it for $4.75 and that'll cover a cup of like fruit fruit coffee if I really want one at Starbucks, I won't feel guilty about it. Tell the buyer this was not intentional at all, and, and I will contact eBay. So I did. 
I'm wasting all this time. And I actually, I got a voice at eBay. I couldn't believe it. And they spoke English. Stunner. Explain the situation. And they, they, they say to me, this sounds like an error from the Postal Service was. And that the Postal Service should not have charged the recipient anything extra. So I relay this to the customer who responds again, quote, I am looking for a refund. I am not being difficult. Of course, I want to know the people who do say I am being difficult. He says, I am not being difficult. I am merely expecting what I ordered at an established price be honored. <laughs> Anything less is unacceptable. Thus far, we are using words like deceptive and unacceptable. So we have a few more exchanges, I don't know, maybe three or four throughout this process. And I figure, you know what? Fine. I'll just give him the refund. I don't even know how to do it. I don't, I don't even care. I just want it to be done. And to be honest, I didn't want to be the guy who screws over some poor dude in Buffalo, New York over some football cards. I, I just I was like, this isn't even worth it. Why am I even, why, why am I sweating this? Then I had a moment where I thought, no, 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 no. Screw this guy because I am trying to be nice. I am being nice. I have, gov I have gone above and beyond to be decent about this stupid nothing transaction. And I'm like, I'm tired of being taken advantage of. So no, no, I get out a shovel, get out an ax, and I'm dug in. I am not giving in on this one. So am I not only ready to fight but I'm ready to retain legal counsel at $400 an hour to win my case. Right is right. And I did nothing wrong. I did nothing deceiving intentionally. So you can take your unacceptable, you can take your refund and shove it down your throat. So no good, sir. I will not, not, N-O-T, all caps, be giving you a refund of $3.91. Okay. Not all of us is just made out of money. <laughs> all right. So let's move on to something a little bit calmer. My guest for the latest installment of the Ingle Angle is one of the greatest tennis players in the world and a total major league badass. World is full of tennis players, and she's one of the very best in the world. Uh, she has been a professional tennis player for about 10 years, give or take-ish. Uh, she um, currently ranks fifth in the world. That's fifth. And uh, as we speak, or as I write this, uh, she's currently uh, reached the semifinals. I'm sorry, my teleprompter is moving so slowly. I'm messing around with this, and I thought I had it at the right speed. So now this is better. She's reached the semifinals at both the U.S. Open and French Open in the third round of Wimbledon three times, and every time you watch her, and I do like tennis a lot, so every time you watch her, you think, man, she's going to do it this time. She's going to do it. She's really, really close. She really, really is close to winning a Grand Slam. Uh, among her notable achievements and wins, she did defeat Serena Williams back in 2020. Not sure you've heard of Serena Williams. Decent player. Quit. She did quit, but, you know, she was okay. She was okay. Uh, my guest reached number three in the world last year. And she is a native of Greece, currently known for her big serve and big hair bun. Please welcome the great Miss Maria Sakari. Okay, I'm here with Maria Sakari. It's a little bit of an icebreaker here. I like to ask everybody this question. If you and I went out and played tennis right now, how many sets do I win? Sets. <laughs> yeah, how many sets? Are we thinking like two or three, you think? Zero. Wow, that's a little rough. Yeah. Okay, you don't even think I'd win one. No I'm pretty way. good. I mean, I don't play, but I'm, I'm pretty good. So then how are you good if you don't play? I don't know, just ability. I haven't okay. really figured I'll figure it out when I get out there. Uh, you have a cool last name. Do I? It does. It is cool. What does it mean? Do you know? It means nothing. But um, in Greek, zachary, it's sugar. So sakari and zachary are pretty similar. So You're yeah. sugar. I'm sugar. Maria's sugar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, how long have you been speaking English? Uh, I don't know, since I was three, four years old. Oh, so, so for, okay, so yeah. you grew up oh, speaking like, it. Yeah, I mean, Greek is my main language, but right. yeah. 
But do you have a favorite word in English or expression in English or maybe a curse word? I do have a curse. Which one? Uh, I'm not going to say it. Do we, what, what letters does it start with? Uh, the F word. That's a good word. Then, friend. Friend. Yeah, friend. Hell. Is the second <laughs> friend one. hell. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you've been coming to the United States for a long time. Is there anything about the United States culture that still sort of surprises you or weirds you out or you don't quite get yet that we do? Oh, um, yes. What is it? The iced water. I never got why you <laughs> drink iced water. Do you not like, trust it or? It's just, it's ice with right. water. Right. It's not water with ice. So it's water with water. Yeah, but it's so cold. You can you can barely drink that. <laughs> that right. I don't get. And the AC sometimes in like in Florida, the AC is like in minus I don't know Celsius. I would say minus ten degrees. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's yeah, Too but much? you get you get sick at the okay. end. <laughs> uh, okay, I've I had a chance to visit Greece a long time. Ago. Oh, you did? I did. I went to Athens for the uh, Summer Olympics in two thousand four. Oh wow, that it was, was great. Nice. I, I was it. only nine years old, but do you remember it? Yes. Oh, you do. I was the. Um, I was the final in men's tennis. Uh, I was in the crowd with a Chilean, you know, gang, yep. and it was very nice. Uh, I loved it, but there was one thing that I tried there that I thought, "Ooh, I don't know if I love this," and I don't know if the Greeks do or not. Uzo. Oh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of really? alcohol in general, and yeah, I wouldn't promote uzo. Uh, do Greeks really like uzo, or yeah. is that something? Oh, they do. They do like, especially with them, um, you know seafood and stuff it's mm -hmm. it's very common i thought it was awful i would yeah, rather yeah. drinking gasoline i get it <laughs> it was terrible yeah. uh okay so if you had to pick a meal mm -hmm. what are you going to go with lasagna or i don't know if, i'm going to say this wrong pasticcio yeah pasticcio yeah pasticcio really yeah lasagna is trash <laughs> <laughs> pasticcio is so much better uh are you, do you enjoy greek food you do right i think it's the best okay i <laughs> well, love euros I love euros too. Can you find good euros here in the United States? I'm sorry, but you cannot. See, when I had euros in Athens, they put French fries in them. Yeah, some places do. Uh, they're real, like the traditional Greek, because we call it souvlaki. Souvlaki mm -hmm. is, is the pita with the euros, the tomato, the tzatziki. So it's the entire thing, let's say, the, the wrap. Um, the traditional one doesn't have fries, but the modern one has. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, since good. you've come to the United States, have you found good Greek restaurants? Not this time, but um, there are a few in New York that have, you know, nice seafood and good Greek salad. Because I don't understand why in the United States they put um, lettuce in the Greek salad. We don't put any lettuce in Greece. You don't? No, and we don't put any vinegar or any lemon juice on. No. So what it's do you just, put in it? So it's tomatoes, cucumber, onion, feta cheese. Okay peppers and olives with olive oil, salt, and oregano. Yeah, you're right. We do too much of it, don't we? Yeah, it's... We threw too much yeah. junk in it. Uh, okay, so if somebody wants to go to your native Greece, where should... I visited three places. I visited Athens, Marathon, and Hydra. And I marathon? Love, just because of the marathon? A cab driver took me up there, and I wanted... He wanted I was going to retrace the steps of... Uh, Fedipides, okay, is that it? Yes. Okay, so we retraced his steps as best we could, and he took me to Marathon, the city. Mm. And I loved it. I thought it was great. You liked Marathon. <laughs> Should I not have? I mean, okay, it's not is a... It, is it bad? <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> okay, I liked it. Well, I don't get a lot of that here in the United no. States. Uh, and then we went to Hydra. Hydra and, is very nice. It's very pretty. Uh, where should people go? Um, Greece was very busy last summer, so it's very tough to say. Um, I love Crete. Oh, Crete. Okay. Uh, I love Syros. Um, Milos is very nice. Um, you know, every single island on the um, Ionian Sea, which is, you know, the Italian side. Mm -hmm. the, okay, so Corfu and all these islands are very pretty. Um, of course, Mykonos has, I, I don't really like it because it's too wild for me. Oh, is it? It's the one that, you know, is that the, the party, party island? Yeah. Okay. Santorini is very unique. That's the one I've yeah. heard about. Okay. Uh, so when I was there in 2004, I remember somebody telling me that the figures from Greek mythology, it's like bedtime stories for children when they're growing up in Greece. Is that true? Um, I mean, we do learn a lot about them, but 
about the, you know in history a, lo a lot about Greek mythology, but it's not like my our parents just uh, you know they read stories about them before we go to sleep. So you did, did you have a favorite Greek mytho figure from Greek mythology? I mean, we always you know watched Hercules for Hercules. me, yeah, uh, <laughs> and you know the cartoon one. But um, yeah, it's 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 nice to have that. I don't know how you call it, like this Greek mythology going around the world. Okay, so speaking of Greek mythology and mythological figures, there is a Greek basketball player in the United States right now. He's pretty decent, plays yeah. up in Milwaukee. <laughs> Can you say his last name? Because I can't. Yes. How? Yanis Adetokumbo. Nope. I have no, no, I can say Giannis all day. But it's not a Greek last name. You know really? that, right? Yeah, that I actually did. Yeah. Was he, is he North African? He, I mean, his family is from Nigeria. But Nigeria. Yeah. I can't say it. I just say Giannis. Yeah. He's the one. He's like Cher. Everyone or knows who Giannis is. Okay. Yeah. Taylor Swift, same thing. Um, you're a professional tennis player. Is it fun or is it work? It's both. <laughs> so it's, it's a fun job. It's a fun job, yes. Sometimes it's not fun, but um, most of the times it is. Uh, one thing about your career that's a little bit different is that you have an amazing hair bun. Um, when did it become like a thing? I was in China a few years ago. Oh, really? it was so yeah, it was so humid. I was yeah, I used to p play with a ponytail, but then it was so humid. I was sweating so much, and then I had very long hair at the time, mm -hmm. and it used to just every time I would hit the serve, it used to go like under my <laughs> um, my arm, and then I, I couldn't like get it out. And then I was like, God, I had have to do something with it. And then I just tried a bun for for one match, and since then I haven't you know changed it. How long does it take you to put it up in a bun like that? Just uh, a minute. A minute, a minute and a half. I've never timed. I'm, I'll oh, do it tomorrow. Oh, you need to time it. Yeah, you can put that on Instagram <laughs> okay. or TikTok or something like that. I, I don't have TikTok. Uh, uh, the mix two of us. Uh, okay, so you were introduced to the sport when you were a kid. I read when you were six years old, your yes. mother introduced you to the sport. How? And your mom was good, top yes. 50 in the WTA. How long did it take before you could beat her in a match? I remember we used to practice together um, when I was like, 10, 11, 12, and we used to play tie breaks, and sometimes, like, I would most of the times beat her, but then if I, you know, if I lost to her, I would be, I would get so pissed, because, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but there did come a point when you could beat her, right? Yes, it did. Uh, 14, 13? Yeah, I would say around 14. Was that a big deal for both? It had it well. We've never played a set, though. Oh, you won't play a no. set? <laughs> we never played a set. What age were you when you realized, or maybe you and your parents thought, I might be able to be a professional tennis player? Um, I was good as a junior, but not great. I was like, all the other girls that are now um, playing at a professional level, they were so much better than me. So when I was 18 years old, I just told my parents that, uh, I'm gonna give it a try for two years and see if I can do it. And in two years' time, I, you know, I was playing Grand Slams qualifying, so that's when I thought I'm good and I can do it. Is that when you moved to Spain and yes, trained? Yes, that was when I moved to Spain. Okay, so this is a question that I've thought about for a long time as it relates to tennis and other Olympic sports, golf, track and field. Here in the United States, a lot of the very best college programs, um, their players are usually from overseas. Uh, from Europe and places like that. And it's become kind of a point of discussion amongst these programs is why players from overseas are coming over as 18-year-olds and playing for the top college programs. You trained in Europe. What is it about the training there that allows players to come over here and compete at the highest level as opposed to American-born players? I think that both, you know, uh, continents have you know, very good sports. Um, here you're into, you know, different sports than we are in Europe. Like you love your football and mm -hmm. your baseball and these sports don't exist in Europe. Like you've got rugby, but it's not the same. So in Europe, we're more like, um, I would say, I would call it soccer. Right. Uh, <laughs> soccer, European basketball is big. Um, but I think now because of, you know, technology and you know social life has social media has um evolved everything i think that that's why you know a lot of athletes come from europe to the united states because you know they see the nba they see how how good the, the work is here and it's just i don't know it's 
I would say it depends on the sport you choose to do. Uh, you had a chance to play Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. You beat Serena Williams. Was playing her intimidating? It was. I, I was unlucky that it was uh, during the bubble, so we didn't have any crowd. Um, that wasn't, you know, um, I remember I won that match and the only one who was clapping was my coach. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty sad, wasn't it? Um, it was my biggest, my biggest win of, uh, of my career and it was just one person <laughs> supporting me. Um, but then next week she, you know, she was, I remember before playing her for the second time in two weeks, before working on court, she was just, uh, you know, she was ready to beat me. And I was I was a breakup in the third set and I choked. I was, I got nervous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you live in Monaco, is that correct? Correct. From what I read, a lot of uh, European athletes, yes. Formula One drivers live in Monaco uh, for access. Are you a fan of Formula One racing by any chance? I am. I, I became a fan after the famous show. Oh, Drive yeah. to Survive? Yes. Okay, so that's a race that I've always wanted to see. I've never but seen it. You haven't seen it yet? Are you, is your like is your house or your apartment is it right on the track? No, no. Otherwise, I would rent it that <laughs> that weekend. You uh, rent it that weekend? Th that's what people do there. Is it? Yeah. So they can have people in the balconies uh, watching the race. So if you if you kept it, could you like and you don't rent it? Could you see it from where? No, I cannot. Oh, you can't see I cannot, it. Okay. No. Uh, well, I haven't seen. Well, haven't you seen it yet? Because it's always uh, the week the weekend before the French Open, uh, so uh, I cannot be in Monaco. Oh, okay. Well, you have to keep it at least until you like have to retire and see it, right? Uh, yeah, I want to see it, but I'm, I'm sure there are other like great races also um, around the world to see. I haven't seen one. Have you seen an F1 race Never. in person? No, neither have I. Okay, uh, I love to ask this question to people who travel mm -hmm. a lot. You travel a ton. What do you have a really bad travel story experience that you with an airplane? Any of it, airplane, bus getting lost, losing luggage, anything like that? Okay, losing luggage. Any. I, um, recently, yes, because this last summer was crazy for everyone. But my worst experience was that one, only time I flew with a private jet this year. I never want to do it ever again. I'm, wait a minute, I, I, wait a minute. No, wait I minute. prefer commercial than, yeah. I, you, I would go commercial and- You prefer commercial? Yeah. Oh, no, no, after the experience I had, I don't oh, want to see a private jet. You have to. I thought I was going to die. And I'm oh. not scared of flying. What happened? Uh, we were flying in Palm Springs and it was like we were taking off and the wind and uh, I just don't want to remember it. Okay, that, we, I wasn't we, expecting that. Well, one. we couldn't eat for the next two hours. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, it I didn't was, expect that. It was, it was a nightmare. Like, yeah. Uh, where's your favorite place to travel to? I like Australia. Yeah, it's beautiful, um, isn't it? It's very unique. I really liked that one time I went to Brazil. Brazil Ooh, was really? very, very nice. Uh, Dangerous, but nice. Okay, well, yeah. I didn't know that. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any place, there's got to be some place left that you have not visited that you want to visit? Where is that? I'll tell you something that you won't believe, but I've never been to Holland, like Netherlands. Yes. You grew up like two hours <laughs> from know. there. How did you miss I know. it? I've, that's the only place I haven't been in Europe. It's not like the place I really want to go, but it's weird that I haven't gone. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. It's beautiful. You should go there. Okay. These are the last, these are the last kind okay. of These are a lot of fun. Um, what is your idea of perfect happiness? Interv this interview doesn't count. So what is your idea of perfect happiness? I, I, don't, I don't know. It's uh, one of the U.S. Open. Oh no! Women. Just um, I don't know. Spending time with the people I love. Oh, that's a good yeah. answer. That's a great answer. Ooh, what is your greatest fear? Heights. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you do your job, considering how much you have to fly. No, I don't. I'm not scared when I'm flying. I'm scared like. You look out. Yes. Oh. Okay. okay. I just, I just <laughs> yeah. uh, what trait? Do you have that you dislike most in your, about yourself? What characteristic or feature? Mm, I'm impatient. Really? Oh, yes. Like you get mad at the microwave oven? Like, let's go, hurry no, up. No, I get very, very pissed when someone tells me, you know, I have a surprise for you, but it's a surprise. I'm going to tell you in a two days' time or in oh, one okay, week. One of those. I, I hate that. Okay. I can, uh, I can punch them in the face when they do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what trait do you dislike in other people? What I just told you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so impatience. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Um, what living person do you most admire? 
bomb dad me. Giannis. 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 Really, Giannis. All right. On what occasion do you lie? Ooh. Ooh. I'm not a good liar. Uh, <laughs> do you know any good liars who admit that? Like, hey, I'm an exceptional liar. I don't know. Yeah, they probably they wouldn't say that, would they? I would if oh, I was a good liar. Because you're a bad liar. Yes. Okay. Um, no, I don't know. Um, is there anything about your appearance that you dislike? No. Good for Damn, good <laughs> answer. Good for you. God, I wish I had that. That's outstanding. Um, where are you happiest? What does it say? When and where are you happiest? Mm, mm. When I spend time with my boyfriend. Oh, that's very nice. Why are you being so yeah. sheepish about that? Announce that when I spend time with my boyfriend. <laughs> uh, which talent would you most like to have? Talent? Um, People always say music. No. No. Mm -mm. no. Uh, my sister is good in you know, music, so I wouldn't. Um, I would really, you know, I wish I was good with hairstyles and everything, so I could use my hair for different, you know. Just, really? Yes, I'm very bad. I, I can barely do a braid on myself. No, I, saw I you cannot do a braid on myself. I can do a braid on someone else. But you can't do it in the mirror? No, I, okay. I'm just useless. <laughs> so I wish, useless. I wish I could do more stuff with my hair. Okay. What do, would you consider your greatest achievement? You got a lot of them. Um, Anybody who makes it this far in women's professional tennis, that's really, probably really getting good. to world number three. World number three. That's yeah. very, very good. Okay. For if, now. For now. Yeah, you don't want to end it. You're only no. 28. Uh, okay. If you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, what would it be? A thing? Yeah, you can, anything you want. I don't know. I like them. Well, like a chair? Yeah, you feel like this chair. <laughs> well, you can come back as this chair. You can come back no. as this chair. I mean, it's a pretty lame answer, but you could. <laughs> I would want to come chair. back as. Uh, as I would say myself again. Very good. I really love myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay, where you live in Monaco, so I don't know if you can top that. Where would you most like to live? Greece. Greece. Yeah. Oh, you want to move home? Very good. Uh, what is your most treasured possession? Like? Uh, your scrunchie, your watch. Your shoes, those are nice shoes. Your sweater, something your mom or your dad, or your grandparents gave you, like, some, like something that you own that, at your house in Monaco or, or with you now, your jewelry. It's uh, a nice sweatshirt. I would say my necklace. Your necklace. Yeah. Okay, that's very nice. Uh, who are your heroes in real life? My parents. Very good answer. Last one. This one's really I don't weird. want to be in trouble later. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Right? I watch this. I'm like, oh, why did you say <laughs> me? Uh, okay, how do you want to die? I know. Don't blame me. It was I'm on the questionnaire. Okay, Thank very you. good. <laughs> no, you're good. Thank you so much. Thank Ray you. Sakari, good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you love barbecue? I love barbecue. Okay, love barbecue. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.